Ay, you think Belladonna will like this one? That implies Belladonna likes anything. She likes things. Mm. She loves coffee, mm. cafe brit, anything from Tres Rios, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's a bitter brew. Easy now. Highly acidic. Be nice. Mm. Um, uh, medium body? Hey, nothing about her that you wouldn't say to her face. I'd say all of this to her face. Yeah, you probably would. Hola! Uh, how much is this toreado? <laughs> nice tattoo. What was that? Oh, Barista had a Zafon tattoo. What was it? Oh, it said, Destiny doesn't do home visits. Ah. He was a romantic. The barista? Ay, Zafon. Read a book, hermano. <clears throat> I couldn't tell you what the girl's name is. But I could tell you what her lips taste like after a moonlit kiss. Where is he now? Oh, he died. 2020. Mm, just missed him. Oh, man, he was good. The shadow of the wind is something else. I read it in university. Eh, I preferred Kafka. <laughs> the guy who wrote about a man turning into a gigantic insect. <sighs> Much more romantic. <sighs> Gross. Look, nobody has to be one thing. One day you can be a gross man bug, the next you're giving everything up for love. <laughs> Even bug people need love, okay. Exactly. Everyone deserves love. Just like Belladonna deserves yours. <sighs> She's just a roach. No, no, no. No, no. People are complex. Which is why I'm sure you two will get along. And there's no excuse for you not to get her a gift either. What? It doesn't have to be something large, just something with meaning. How about a broom? Stick the flowers. <laughs> How about a peace lily? Peace lily? It's a gesture. <sighs> Had that work for mom? Mom's barely here anyways. Which is why I want you there, Marisa. I need my big little sister, okay? Mm, fine. Thank you. you. You need a gift, something meaningful. Yeah, yeah, I'll find something. Do you want some help? Bella can be specific. I can do it myself. Okay, good. Uh, stick the flowers. See you tomorrow night. Hey, thank you so much. Te quiero un montón. Lo sé. I wear my disgust on my face as Santino openly surrenders his future with a smile. He doesn't deserve what she's doing to him. Try as we can, though. None of us have been able to convince him otherwise. There is more to life than loving someone. You have to love yourself. <sighs> the aroma of coffee saturates the air, mingling with the laughter and conversations of happy couples around the market. As I watch them come and go, I keep thinking about the tragedy awaiting my dear brother. Santino, a few years older, has always been my best friend. Equal parts kind, giving, and eh, sacrificing. His golden flaw is his blind devotion. He'll be a punching bag for other people's whims. All love, no backbone. And here he is about to plunge head first into marriage where the more he gives, the less of himself remains. Hey, here you go, have some crumbs then. Belladonna wears a beautiful mask. She feigns kindness. I don't doubt that Santino has heard her lesser moments, heard her venom-laced sentences. But he believes in the best in people. Can he truly believe that love can conquer all? That he could soften her prickly edges. Sharp edges. Dagger edges. The laughter of the couples around the patio were a stark contrast. They hold hands, whisper sweet nothings. Even if they are blinded by their own delusions, they're all happy. I've never worried about finding myself a genuine connection. I only hoped that Santino would. He's the better of the two of us. 
It shouldn't have been too much to ask God for him to find someone who would cherish him, respect him, and lift him higher instead of dragging him down. I can't sit by and watch as my brother slips into her grasp. If I don't lose him now, I'll certainly lose him later. My heart aches for Santino, for the happiness he so desperately sought, and for the happiness he's murdering at the altar of Belladonna. I clutch my coffee cup, its warmth seeping into my fingertips. I can sit, observe, and pray that the tides turn in his favor, but deep down, I know that the battle has already begun, and the outcome remains uncertain. Something must be done. I spend the rest of the afternoon in the cafe, wasting time and procrastinating the unpleasant task of finding a gift for Belladonna. When I finally take to the market later in the day, the aisles are nearly deserted, and the evening breeze carries the whispers of vendors packing up their wares for the night. The market, once teeming with life and vibrant colors, now breathes its last breath as night blankets the stalls. Hmm. My eyes scan the last remnants of the market's treasures. Knockoff electronics, 100% authentic alpaca meat. I'm seeking something special. Something that will mm, cast a spell on Belladonna. No, a curse. Something magical that will show Santino who she really is. Something that will uh, unveil the person she hides underneath. Yeah, if only it was so easy. As the night swallows the market and vendors slump away, I spy a single table open at the end of the market, hidden to the edge of the street. On its table, dry leaves flutter and break off in the breeze. There are dozens of plants, all of them wilting with no vendor to be seen. All that's left is an empty chair and a spread of dead plants. Uh, hey, is this place open? No, no sé, no ha visto a ella. Este, I haven't seen her this week. So they just left this all out here. Huh. What a waste. Littered between the arid corpses of Guanacastes, one survivor captures my attention. An orchid. Alive and well. The only one on the table left alive. Its petals shift from a deep blue to a mesmerizing shade of purple as I bend down to get a closer look. I reach out to touch one of the velvety leaves, and a shiver runs down my spine. There's something unique about it, some presence that sets it apart from the mundane trash around the market. Its petals are outwardly beautiful, but the shifting of colors gives it an unsettling aura. A fitting offering for a woman who portrays herself with a glossy grace, but as the shimmer of a cruel creature. If I see her, I'll let her know you came by, okay? Está bien? That's fine. I found exactly what I was looking for. With the orchid nestled in my hands, I make my way back home. Along the way, I keep turning the pot to get a better grip, but every time, the blades of the petals slowly turn to meet my face. It's almost like they want me to notice them. Okay. Oh, come on. There. Right. I fumble my way into the apartment the weight of the weird, chromatic gift heavy in my hands. Stepping into the dimly lit room, a prickling sensation crawls up my spine, like the very air is charged with anticipation. I'd say it's find a place for you... here. Yeah. <laughs> I place the orchid on the kitchen counter, its petals now drinking in the soft glow of the moon 
filtering through the window. The colors of the flowers are mesmerizing. And looking at it from each angle, it takes on hues that play tricks on my senses. Blue, purple, teal. It's never one thing. The stock of it, or whatever you call it, is gnarled and hardly pretty. The same could be said for the rest of it. Its roots fold out of the pot, bruised and splotched, like alien arms wearing faded tattoos. You're almost too strange to give up. You're like... Huh, something out of a Gabriel Garcia Marquez novel or something. You, little one, are a weird, ugly little monster. <laughs> Perfect. Shaking off my curiosity, I clean up and climb into bed, leaving the door to my bedroom cracked open ever so slightly. Clicking off the light, I roll over to look through the doorway where I can see a sliver of light creeping into the kitchen. The orchid is perched on the counter, bathing in the lunar glow. I watch it, unable to tear my gaze away, convinced that it's not just my imagination playing tricks on me. There's a... a gaze, if one can call it that. A velvety vampire drinking up the moon. Even without eyes, I feel like it's watching me. It's flowers casting shadows on the walls. Oh, that's it. <clears throat> I'm convinced that my mind being on edge can be owed to drinking caffeine too late in the day. That and the anxiety surrounding Santino's impending nuptials. I roll back out of bed and make my way to the door my hand reaching for the doorknob. A whisper in my ear. D did I hear that or only think it? I close the door, and the sound echoes through the stillness of the room. It takes a while, but I eventually drift into an uneasy sleep. Oh, oh, no. oh, my head. Okay. Good morning, you weird little shit. Got up to anything last night? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. So, like, what are you anyway? Coming. Sanito? Melissa, where are you? Dude, at home. It's like 9 a.m. I just got to the venue. Everybody from Bella's family is here. <sighs> Isn't the rehearsal at like 6 p.m.? Yeah, but they're here now. Can you come down? Yeah, yeah. I'll be right there. Well. Oh. I don't suppose you have any magical powers like teleporting, do you? I guess we better get dressed. The metro is the quickest way there, and with the orchid cradled in my arms, its fragrance blends with the city's aromatic chaos. The scent of street food mixes with exhaust fumes and the plant's musk, creating a symphony of, uh, inspired smells, to say the least. Commuters squirm around us, but as new ones cram in, they seemingly keep their distance from the plant nestled on my lap. Maybe it's the pollen? I don't mind it. I finally arrive at the witch's estate, my sweat mingling with the plant's perfume. Melissa! Better late than never. What is that? I got her a gift. Uh huh. Oh, a gift for me. Belladonna. Mm, you look like you just rolled out of bed. 
Her fingers slip through Santino's. She oozes beauty, a flawless facade for a viper. Hmm, <laughs> I did, actually. I didn't think this started until later. <laughs> That's the dinner rehearsal. This is the rehearsals rehearsal. I'm sorry, the what? There's the rehearsal rehearsal. Dinner rehearsal. Dinner reception rehearsal. Wedding ceremony. And the reception. <laughs> uh, Manisa bought you a gift, my love. What is this? Yeah, uh, a peace offering. <laughs> it's uncanny. Mer, what do you think of Bella's dress? The uh, choker is a bold choice. <laughs> it's my grandmother's. You know, family is everything. Yeah, I uh, um, thought so too. Yes, we spoke with her. I think she understood where we stand. Melissa is very busy these days. Your brother never told me what it is you do. I'm an aquatic survival supervisor. A uh, what? Lifeguard. But not just any lifeguard. She worked at the Summer Olympics. Oh, a lifeguard at the Olympics. That's quite special. I can imagine all those world-class athletes and the help they would need. I'm sure having someone like you watching over there would be comforting. Even the best people choke at the last minute. You can leave that on the table with the others. Help yourself to something to eat. Not too much, though. Leave some for the guests. Family is everything? Aquatic survival supervisor? Oh yeah, thanks for the help there. You need to be honest. Oh, when am I not? Honest and kind. Oh, I could tighten that joker around her stupid neck. Aye, enough. Uh, don't snap at me. Where's mom? Mom's not here. When's she coming? She's not. Said she's not coming. Oh, son. She doesn't approve. That makes two of us. But she's really not coming? She's not coming. You can't go through with this. Not with her mom. I'm a grown man. I can make my own decisions. Yeah, but this is a wedding. I... Need to talk to Bella. My heart begins to pound in my veins. How can such a shit-stained woman exist? Driving a wedge into our home and she dares to say that she's all about family. I can feel my eyes going radioactive. She looks back at me once. The glance stabbing as a smile curls up at the corner of her lips. I wish she'd walk out into the jungle and something would just take her. That she'd, I don't know, evaporate. That she'd abandon the wedding and I could get the bitter taste of her out of my mouth. Taste. The weight building in my chest pauses. I look down at the plant. Its veins have grown thicker, agitated. Just like me. The petals slowly turn back to me and my eyes go wide. Taste. <gasps> no fucking way. <gasps> I heard you. N not in my ears, in my head. Go on, say something. <sighs> God, I'm losing my mind. You felt it, didn't you? You felt what I was thinking or feeling. Yes. <gasps> All right, psycho. How are you doing this? Start talking or I start cutting.
<clears throat> what do you want? <clears throat> you you want water? No. Oh, oh what do you want? You. <sighs> Me? What do I want? I want to know how I'm having a conversation with a fern. Thirst. I mean, it rains so much out there. It... You, you don't need tap water, do you? No. Then what? Thirsty for what? Oh, fuck. Please don't say blood. Yeah, thank God. So, uh, what do you want? Feel. Y you want to feel? Yes. Is that why you swelled up? You know, when, when Belladonna was being a bitch and when I was stressing out? Yes. <gasps> you drink on... Drama? Yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no wonder you're here. You're so Latina. Why didn't you say so? I could go on all day about her. Pull up a seat. <laughs> oh yeah, listen, okay, she is terrible. Everything she says has this tone of like, I'm better than you. And the worst part is, my brother can't see that. He's too forgiving. His trait, not mine. Brother. Yeah, Santino. Ugh, he just makes me so mad. You know who he's like? Rosaura from Like Water for Chocolate? It's like dangling candy in front of a child. I'm not saying all men are like that, but ugh, Santino's so easily taken by her. It's gross. It's like a siren's call and she's just dashing him against the rocks and then... I can't believe I'm talking to a plant. Are you... Like, is this helping? Yes. <laughs> I guess this makes you my foot-tall therapist. <sighs> the wedding is coming up and it's just... Once you're in, you're in. Even if you get a divorce, you become a pariah. People wonder what you did wrong in the last relationship. You lose years of your life that you can't be yourself. And it'll ruin him. Now and forever. Hey, I don't suppose you have, like, some sort of, I don't know, spy network of roots that can dig up any dirt on her, do you? Too much to ask. Where did you come from, even? Far. Far? Like, jungle far? Or, I don't know, space far? Are you an alien? Okay, mm well, welcome. Uh, you know, I thought you were kind of creepy at first, but you're not that bad. I mean, if anything, you're a good listener. I need to warn you, though, you're in danger. I can barely keep my own houseplants alive, let alone you. <laughs> uh, th uh th that's a joke. <laughs> I love this song. I love this song. Marco! Hello! Shouldn't you, uh, be watching the pool? Hmm, they're fine. Does that book double as a flotation device? There's like ten people in there, they're fine. Sure. Uh... You didn't come back to the reception, Marcel. Oh, the reception. I've texted. Yeah, been busy. That's fine. What are you reading? Lots of books here. Taking up a new interest in gardening? 
Pick these up from the library. They're pretty interesting. The tongues of plants. Huh. They're uh, essays about evolutionary ecology and the way plants talk and feel. These scientists in China found they could increase crop growth by broadcasting certain frequencies. So like playing Juanes? <laughs> There's these things called VOCs. They're like a, a chemical signal. They're the plant version of animal pheromones, and they think the chemicals allow them to communicate and, like, warn other plants if they're being eaten. They might also be able to influence animals. I don't know yet. Some light summertime reading. Well, I, uh, have something else I'd like you to read, if you're up to it. What is this? My vows. <laughs> you were always better with words than reading. And knowing all the authors. I'd really appreciate you reading this and giving me your notes. You know I can't. Why not? Because these words for her, I... They should come from you. They should be from the heart. Just read. Yeah, this is very sweet. Too good for her. She's going to wear a floral crown instead of a veil. That's why I started with my queen. Well, it's very heartfelt. You'll woo everyone at the wedding. I... I wanted to talk to you about that. I know it bothers you, so I'm giving you an out. An out? You don't need to come to the reception. I, I'm sorry, I, I don't? Look, I know it's difficult for you. With work and... <laughs> I don't need to be there, or she doesn't want me there. She wants family only. <laughs> Excuse me? W what am I? Her family. Oh, God. First mom, now this. You see what she's doing, don't you? She's cutting out our roots and tearing you away from us. Mad. You know what? No. I'll be there. See her try and stop me. I don't want you there. I needed you there at the dinner rehearsal. The dinner. I'm nervous. I'm so nervous. I'm trying to do the right thing, and I needed you there, and you bailed. I needed you. You can come to the ceremony, but I don't know what else. Uh, um, <clears throat> there's still the reception rehearsal before the ceremony um i i can come to that if you want yeah sure i need to go enjoy your book and then he just left Yes! It's like she's gotten into his head already. I swear she's the worst sort of person. Control freak. She just turned him against mom. Against me. Hold on, I need some water. My head is pounding. I don't think your aroma's helping. Can you tone it down a bit? That, that smell, it's like chemical signals, right? That's how you talk to me? Yes. Hey, can you do anything else? Like, I don't know, make people fall out of love? Or, or like, make people say or do things? Yes. Wait, really? So, wait, so if I asked you to let off your pollen spore stuff, could you make Belladonna break up with Santino at the reception rehearsal before the ceremony? Like, like give her a truth serum? Yes. <gasps> Holy shit. Wait, hey, you'd never make me do anything, would you? 
And you're not making me do anything right now? <sighs> okay. Okay. Are we gonna do this? Yes. Okay. Yeah, let's do this. I get you in front of her and you do your thing. Do we have a deal? Deal. Walking into the banquet hall is like stepping into a jaguar's den. The colonial-style haciendas decorated with vibrant blues and yellows, and decorators scuttle around like ants, draping every surface with ribbons and bows. There are throngs of chatty guests, and laughter is all around. It's all opulent enough to be the real thing. Stupid that this is just the rehearsal. The orchid and I step through the fever dream of tulle and pastels, and under an arch of flowers. Hey, are they friends of yours? Distant cousins or something? No. Oh. Crystal chandeliers, doves in gilded cages, mason jars filled with wishes on each table, and tiny chalkboards as table settings. It's an unhinged telenovela every spectacle you can imagine. I hear the clacking of heels, and I spot Belladonna flitting across the hall like a tropical bird. She spots me, her look of sweetness betraying a single word in her mind. Intruder. Yeah, well, let's just see about that. I grip the pot of my partner in arms, and the venue scent turns from a cotton candy apocalypse to a heavy floral perfume. <laughs> One moment, please. I put on my mask. Feign ignorance. Get close. Each step she takes towards me shares a rhythm with my heartbeat. Each heel louder than the last. Marisa, another peace offering? Uh, Santino said I didn't need to be here, but I thought that uh, if... We're sisters. You might need some help. <laughs> Aww, that's very sweet of you. I don't think I need any of your help. White teeth like daggers. I'm a blemish on her perfect day. Y you sure? Look, I'm very sorry, Mediza, but it's very packed here as it is. I don't think we need you. Her voice is cold. Lacking any genuine warmth. There's a seat for you at the wedding. Your brother insisted. But he already told you about the reception, yes? Yep. I look down at my partner. Do your thing. <coughs> <coughs> Where did you find that thing? <coughs> it's one of a kind. Just like you. Excuse me a moment, dear. Oh, sure. Did you do it? Yes. Santito, sweetheart! Your sister showed up. What? I, I, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll go talk to her. No, it's fine. People like that... They just want wedding days to be all about them. Just tell me how beautiful I look and I'll forget all about her. <laughs> you look ravishing. <laughs> Thank you, my love. And you look positively plain. Plain? Yes, unremarkable. Oh, don't look so offended. That's just your face. Well, I'll do my best to clean it up before the ceremony. Hmm, <laughs> I'd hope so. So, what, what are you doing? Is that the best you can do? No. Love, did I do something wrong? No. Why? Just, you seem... agitated. I feel fine. Your sister aggravated me. Clinging so hard to her big brother, refusing to let him be a man. Perhaps I should go talk to her then. 
No. No. I need all of your attention. This is our wedding. You shouldn't be thinking of any other woman. I understand. You have the charisma of a puppy. That's a good thing? It's the best thing. I'm so grateful the world has given you to me. There's been so many bad men in this world, and I have found the kindest one. The best one. So please, don't look at her. Look at me. Motherfucker. <sighs> what was that? Were you even trying? I told you to make her break up with him. Truth serum, let all that toxicity out. That was barely a scuffle. He, he could just pass that off as her being stressed out from the wedding planning. I don't need a bridezilla. I need her to be seen as the monster she is. Are you listening to me? Well? Talk to me. You're feeding right now, aren't you? No, 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 no. I won't give you the satisfaction of feeding off of my frustration. This is a partnership, which means I help you, you help me. I won't let you be a parasite to me, you understand? Tomorrow at the wedding, they don't utter their vows, understood? You stop it. Any means necessary, got it? Let me hear you say it. Hey. Hey. Saw you. Yep. Wanna talk? Let's talk. You're really going through with this, aren't you? Yeah. It's a fucking mistake. That's an opinion. You know, growing up, you always told me I could come to you with anything. That you'd listen to me whenever anything bothered me. When did that stop? It never stopped. Then why aren't you listening to me now? Because I love her. She doesn't love you. She's a bloodsucker. You read those vows, and you're tying yourself to the worst decision you'll ever make. It's still my decision. Oh, come on, Santino. You're drowning with her. You're a lifeguard. People can swim on their own. She loves having someone to do everything for her. She's come on. using you. No, she's not. No? You just like to help others so much because it makes you feel like you have a purpose. Is that it? I've always had to step up. Supporting you and mom has always been on me. Well, that's family. She isn't family. You haven't even met her family. See? So what? You're replacing ours so quickly? They're not the ones pushing me away. Not like you. Not like mom. You know what it's like to be a man in this situation? Do you? Clearly not. You're being the poster child for emasculation. You know, Mary, something else. So we're just going to keep arguing about this, aren't we? We don't have to. I'll see you tomorrow. Or not. Whatever. <sighs> Santino. Don't do it! Don't do it. Don't do it. Let's go. The wedding day is like stumbling into a real-life Vanity Fair shoot. Lavish floral arrangements that cost more than my rent adorn the balconies and door frames. People wear custom-made gowns and suits and look like Hollywood starlets. Jewelry twinkles in every direction, and the church is fully packed. I usher to the front row and take my seat. Everything here is forced, false, except my brother's beating heart. He stands at the pew, glowing, a tender smile. Belladonna's hair is a masterpiece of braids and flowers. I break her open like a wedding piñata. Again, does she carry that plant everywhere? 
Hello? Hi. My dearest Belladonna, as I stand before you, I am filled with overwhelming love and gratitude. From the moment we met, you've captivated my heart in ways that I never thought possible. Today, I vow to cherish and adore you every single day of our lives together. I promise to be your unwavering support, your rock when the storms of life threaten to overwhelm us. Through every challenge we may face, I will stand by your side, holding your hand and walking with you. I promise to be your confidant, your safe haven, where you can be your truest and most vulnerable self. I give you my heart, my soul, and my unwavering commitment to love and cherish you for all the days of my life. Don't do it. Oh, my dear fiancé, as we stand here on this momentous day, I can't help but marvel at how life has brought us together. I vow to embrace your quirks, even the ones that make me roll my eyes. I've always been one of those girls with a quick retort and a sharp tongue, the kind of person who tosses out snarky comments without a second thought. But you know what they say about those people? They're often the ones with the most fragile hearts. Don't do it. It scared me how well you saw the real me underneath. And I have you to thank for loving me openly. For that, I pledge to give you the family you deserve. Don't do it. Do you, Santino Javel Silva, Take Belladonna Gonzalez Rodriguez to be your lawfully wedded wife. Today, I take you as my wife. Don't do it. My partner. Don't do it. And my best friend. Don't. Yes. <coughs> do you know? Is he? What's going on? <coughs> Is he alive? Is he alive? <coughs> Son? Breathe! Can't, can't breathe! <coughs> I sit, frozen in horror, my heart pounding in my chest. Son and Belladonna collapse at the altar, their faces wrenched with fear as their mouths open for air. People leap from the sides of the altar to help them, but within seconds they clutch their throats and collapse. Asphyxiation takes the wedding party and panic erupts. The air in the church changes, becoming thick and suffocating. Too much perfume. Yes, 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 yes. I look down at the orchid, and its leaves are bent forward, feeding on the violence. I look down at the orchid, and its leaves are bent forward, feeding on the violence. <clears throat> An invisible force squeezes the life from Sun's lungs. Belladonna starts to convulse. Stop it! Stop it! No! Please. Son's eyes flutter as oxygen is cut off from his brain. The orchid's chemicals have shut down everyone's ability to breathe. Oh my god. This isn't what I wanted! I start ripping the petals and leaves off the orchid. I dig my hands into its soil and tear out fistfuls of root. I snap its stalk into pieces as quickly as I can. No! 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 Stop it! Stop it! I black out in the middle of the chaos.
Hello, Maritza. How are we today? When I wake up, the doctors tell me that when the brain can't get enough oxygen, brain cells start to swell. This leads to increased pressure inside the skull. It causes confusion, disorientation, loss of consciousness, brain damage. The doctor and your mother will be back shortly. We're all here for you, sweetheart. <gasps> Santino is dead. Belladonna is dead. Half the wedding party, dead. There's many people thinking about you. They left you gifts. The nurse motions to the corner of the room. I roll my eyes with the force of a ghost haunting its own flesh. I see the sterile walls of the hospital room, the flickering fluorescent lights. I'm conscious of every sound, but can't utter a single word. They say it's a miracle that I'm alive. Some books and flowers. On the table, an array of get well soon cards. Then I see it. Mesmerizing colors that dance and shift. The orchid. Petals clinging together in a disarrayed mess. Even without eyes, I can sense it. Watching me. It's cold, empty stare. I can't leave. Can't kill it, no. I can only stare back at it. Trapped in this silent prison. You've been listening to Invasive Affairs, a collection of three standalone audio dramas addressing the themes of ecology, invasion, and loss. Belladonna features the voice talents of Melissa Medina as Maritza and Orchid, Ryan Negron as Santino, and Sofia Kia as Belladonna. With additional voices and sounds by Darian Vorlick, Katie Hageman, Kat Peterson, Jose Berrios, Nina Nikolic, R.J. Bailey, Maddie Opincaro, James Hamblin, Jonathan Fuentes, and Chantal de Leon. Written, directed, and sound designed by Colin DeGraff. Produced by Cold Open Stories. If you want to hear more tales like this, head on over to coldopenstories.com. On the site, you can find our call for submissions, join our Discord chat, and delve into thousands of hours of fan fiction and original stories. If you feel like dropping us an email, you can also reach out to coldopenstories at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening.